Hi, and welcome to Waterproof Leadership with me, Dr. Anthony Donovan. I get often asked what makes up the best teams that I've worked with. And I wanted to take a few minutes to just discuss what I think are some of the characteristics of the best teams. A lot of this might be teams that are sports related, but I think most of these things have application to those kinds of teams that whatever they might be, whether it's in the workplace or at home or uh, maybe it's just your own local game night that you're trying to get your team together. But I think there's some characteristics that capture all these things. And so I wanted to just share a couple points really quickly. So the best teams that I've encountered um, recognize that each season starts as a new season. And this is really important because we've all been part of a team that we enter as new people coming in, and that team exists already. And if they don't understand that each season starts as a new season, then there's not a place left for the people to join that are new, as well as recognizing that people have left and the, the dynamics of the team itself changed. So the best teams that I've ever observed understand that about that each season is a new season in itself. And though even though the team may look the same or be very close, that there's a difference between one season to the next. And so it's really important for people uh, to understand that for a team to be great, for its best to be the best version of itself, it needs to recognize that a season uh, starts with a new season each year. One of the things I think also that's important for best teams is that the best teams that I've experienced and been a part of recognize that improvement happens on the practice field. Now, sometimes that's a, a literal practice field, like on a field but or in a football stadium or something like that. But sometimes it's about practicing the things that the team does. So for example, at my work, we have, we simulate some of the work that we do. Um, we make sure that people have that experience. We give them the opportunity to practice those skills. When I was a younger man and I was playing baseball, one of the things that would be go through as drills would be, we would talk about what we would do if something was hit to us. If I was playing second base and there was a runner on first base and the ball was hit to me, I would have to simulate what that would mean, which would mean I would throw it to the shortstop who in turn would throw it to the first baseman. That kind of repetition and that kind of practice um, allows people to make improvements. It allows them to make mistakes in that moment so that they can learn from them and grow. But it also helps people develop the skills to do things without looking like they're spending all their energy thinking about it. That only happens if you as a team commit to the idea of putting practice as a place where people can improve. And so the best teams that I've been around have always understood that improvement will happen on the practice field. Now, is it possible that you could have a great team with great players? Maybe. Can you have a great team with all great players without great coaching? And I think the answer to that is no. So you can't assemble limitless number of great players and expect that people are going to be great. Let's use, the, uh, let's use the example of actual sports. Think about the best teams that you've ever had. Can they, have you ever seen a team that's made up of a bunch of great players not succeed and be successful and, as they intended to be? As a fan of several sports teams, I've seen that occur on several occasions where I thought we were loaded, but there was something that was missing. There was maybe, uh, we had maybe too many great players, but not enough great coaches to help those players be that great that it can be. The fact of the matter is, is that when you have, everybody's a great player, not everybody will be able to be the role that they could be optimally um, or without any other great players. Sometimes great players become great players because other players haven't risen to the abilities to be great. But on the best teams, the ones that work the best are, are where they have great players who understand the roles that they can play, what they need to be to be great, and they're done, that's done with great coaching, a coach that understands how to get the most out of each player, how to help players or team members understand what do they need to change or adapt to to allow other people to be great. Sometimes I, I've talked about this in leadership as I'm putting together teams. I've had people who are great leaders themselves, could lead a team well, but there's somebody else on the team who isn't a very good follower. And in some cases, the decision is to make, some, make them the lead of a, a team and allow the person who's a great leader, also understanding how to be a follower, let the person who is, needs to be a leader more than the person who needs, who's a good follower, uh, as well as a good leader. Sometimes it takes a good coach to see a team and understand what is it that I need to get the most out of everybody on that team. 
the best teams I've always experienced have great players who have great coaching to help them be great at the best things that they can be. I mentioned this a little bit ago about every season, understanding that starts a new season each year. But part of the reason why teams have to have this idea of a new season is that teams have people who they bring in new players, um, players leave. Even in the most stable teams, some things change. People get promoted. Maybe sometimes their situation changes a little bit. But the best teams always understand that in order for them to be successful long term, they're going to have to integrate new players into it. Um, so the best teams that I know are ones that are always good at being able to have new players be integrated into their team. Some of that helps by having a, a good practice schedule and understanding that there are going to be environments where people can learn. So when you have a great team that knows how to uh, bring in new people, you know you create ways in which for them to be successful by having training and experiences that get them ready for them to be uh, part of the team and a member of the team. Sometimes that includes just creating a, a sense for them of the culture of the team that you're on and making sure that they understand that. In my organization, we spend a lot of time helping people be part of a team and integrating uh, new team players. Part of that is um, if you're going to have an organization that's going to change out people and because people are growing and they're expanding their opportunities, you're going to need to bring in new people. And one of the ways to do that is to have a way for them to integrate into it. So it's really important for the best teams to always find a way to integrate new players. How many organizations you've ever been at that were great while they had a certain player in charge or a certain person in charge and that person leaves and all of a sudden um, it fails. And part of that is because when you have the ability to integrate new players, you have the ability to bring them up and grow them in to become the future leaders so that whenever someone leaves, you have the ability to replace them or at least uh, continue on with the good things that the team was doing. Something else to think about is you can't be great unless you're on the field. How many times have you encountered people who armchair quarterback or think that they could be great at something, but when you ask them to be there and to really commit themselves to being on the team and to doing the work, they're not there. Here's the thing. On the best teams, you can't be great unless you're on the field. You won't have the opportunities to show how great you can be, both as a team and as an individual, unless you're there to, practice, to be able to do that work. And so it's critical that for the best teams that you be on the field and you're putting out that effort. The other thing that I think the best teams do is that they understand that everybody on the team has talent. At some point, you're on the team for a reason because you show some ability, you show some promise, you show some, show some potential. And the best teams that I've encountered understand that everyone has talent. Some people are able to use that talent in different ways, in better ways, or maybe even in some cases, ways that are unique to them only. But the, that's not only works so much if the people on that team don't understand and respect the fact that everybody has the ability. Think about just like something like the NBA. Pretty much every team member on an NBA team has the ability to do some of the basic things and to be somewhat successful on an NBA team. Everybody can score points. Everybody can play defense. Everybody can rebound. Now, there are some that can play it better. But generally speaking, most of the people, when you make it to that level, they're capable of probably beating most people at the game of basketball. A lot of times, the best teams, everybody on that team has some level of talent to the point that they could probably be better than most of the common people or other teams that might be out there. Sometimes it's understanding and respecting the fact that you as an individual have talent, even if someone else might be better, and being respected for that talent and what it can bring. You never know. Sometimes the best opportunity to show how talented you are is waiting in line, wait, ready to be, to be uh, the leader or to be a, the, the best team member on that day so that the team can be successful. One of the best teams that I've ever encountered, I think sometimes uh, we underestimate the idea that veterans matter, but I think they really do. And I'm not talking just about veterans of military veterans. I'm talking about people who have experience. The best teams that I know have this integration of, of new people and people with experience, but they also respect the fact that those people who've been there for a while offer something unique that's different than just people coming onto the team. And the best teams that I've seen have a mix that understand that veterans have a role. Sometimes the veterans aren't the superstars of today. Maybe for lots of reasons, they're not as good as they used to be, or maybe their interests are in other areas. But the team that respects someone who has got talented and, and, and gifted and it's the experience, the, 
to make a team be successful or contribute to a team are often some of the best teams that I've seen there. They have the ability to help people, the people be a better team. When you're, you're a veteran on a team, you've experienced the things, the ups and downs, the highs and the lows of a team, and that's really valuable insight. Sometimes um, it can be something that can be helpful. You don't have to step into every, onto every hand grenade to know that it's a hand grenade. Sometimes having someone who's been through those experiences helps young teams and new teams avoid some of the pitfalls that other teams might have encountered in the past. That's why the best teams understand and have veterans and allow them to matter to the success of the team. The next thing that I think about the best teams is that they all have fun. Fun is really fundamental to the best teams. How many, how many times have you seen really great teams playing, doing whatever they're doing, but it almost looks effortlessly because it almost looks like it's more fun than it is actual work. And I think that's the best teams that I've seen. I've seen this example where the best things that they are show up in the things that they do and it, and it shows up as fun for them. And why not do it? I think the other thing is, is that when you have a team that's fun and maybe everything isn't going perfect, sometimes it makes it easier for you to tolerate and to deal with the things that are not quite exactly perfect. If you have a team that's tense and um, uh, rigid and isn't really enjoying the experience, when something doesn't go right, sometimes that's when you see the wheels fall off. The team that's fun and enjoys each other, enjoys the moment, enjoys the experience, is often the one that's easier to adapt to adversity when they experience it. And so the best teams that I've always experienced are the ones that have fun. So it's super important to understand that the characteristics of a best team are, are uh, sometimes uh, things that don't seem to, on the surface of it, be that much, matter that much. But they're the things, the little details that really allow a team from being okay or good to a team that can be really great to eventually to be the best team possible. And so all those things, whether it be starting as a new season or improving on the fit practice field or understanding that great coaching is as important as great players, and that knowing that the best teams will always integrate new players along with the idea that you have to be on the field to be great and understand that everyone on your team has talent. And when you have that, you understand that the veterans make a difference and they matter to your team's success. Ultimately, that allows you to be the best team that has fun while being that team. So that's just a little bit on what the best teams have and what characteristics I think they exhibit when they're really doing their job well. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you the next time.